Shout out to Brown, Aaron. Boy, Money Brown, he get a lot of money. That's why I call him Money Brown. What's <laughs> <laughs> good, Money Brown TV? What up, what up? Yeah. Yeah. I want to give a shout out to Money Brown TV. Thank you so much for everything. Hey, Brian Garcia here. Yo, 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 what's going on out there, fight world? This your boy Money back with another one, fam. And this one here is on a legendary lineup. We have Canelo Alvarez, the hottest fighter on the planet, the number one pound for pound king, the four division world champion, the undisputed super middleweight world champion, looking to be the greatest Mexican fighter of all time, and one of the greatest to ever lace him up. And then we have the legendary coach, Nacho Bernstein, who coached a variety of Mexican fighters. He's Mexican himself. And, um, you know, he had some interesting things to say about Canelo Alvarez. So did Juan Manuel Marquez, the four division world champion, right? They had some interesting things to say about Canelo Alvarez. For his status as being one of the greatest Mexican fighters of all time and just being one of the greatest fighters from Mexico in general. You feel me? Nacho came out and said, I recognize that he's a great fighter and athlete because he trains very well. And his trainer, Eddie Reynoso, prepares him very well. But I don't agree with that, right, said Bernstein. He also said, because the backbone of Mexican boxing, Mexican boxing comes from Mexican boxers. And he's on the path to that select group of fighters. It doesn't matter that he's won the titles, that he's won the money he's making, right? So he's saying it doesn't matter that he's won the titles and that he's won and the money he's making, saying he don't care about the money and the titles he's won. I recognize he's a great fighter, but there's still a little more he needs to do to be in the hearts of the Mexican boxing fans. What's missing is one or two fights like the type Julio Cesar Chavez had and others. He fights and he keeps fighting, but personally, for me as a trainer of many fighters, he doesn't fulfill me. He hasn't had a fight that really captured the hearts of the people. He fights and wins and wins millions of dollars, and that's good. It makes me happy that he's having success. But he hasn't had that one fight that we all want to see. He hasn't had, he hasn't had it, said Bernstein. There haven't been any fights from Canelo where he captured the hearts of the people. And the reason for that is he failed to fight the opposition that he needs to impress the fans. He say, I respect the opinion of Juan Manuel Marquez, but I think very soon he will give us the fight that we all want and will enter the select group of greatest fighters, said Bernstein and reaching to, um, reaching, sorry, reacting to Marquez saying that Canelo would never, this Juan Manuel Marquez, everybody, he said Canelo would never be the greatest Mexican boxer ever. You know, and Bernstein finished that up. He said, I still have hope to see him in a fight where he looks sensational because he wins and looks good. I didn't see, he said, I didn't see Canelo versus Plant. I can't give my opinion, but those people told me that Plant threw it. That makes like five fights of Canelo that leaves a lot of doubt, said Bernstein without naming the other four questionable fights of Canelo that were questionable. Because they can fool you and the fans, but not me, because I've had a shit ton of time watching boxing, Bernstein saying. So what Bernstein saying is, listen. And this is why I made you Marquez right here. Why I made Marquez, you know, he disliked Canelo. He said Canelo will never be the greatest Mexican fighter of all time. You know, we know Marquez got to have some type of um, animosity towards Canelo Alvarez because he's one of the greatest Mexican fighters. So he don't want to put Canelo Alvarez over him, over Eric Morales, over Julio Cesar Chavez Sr., you know, over fighters like that because they feel like, you know, um, Canelo gets to pick his fights and he put – um, weight clause in the fights and Marquez saying that you know if you want to be the best you should fight the fighters at the weight and don't drain nobody or things of that nature is what he's saying so when Canelo going out there and fighting certain people that's way bigger than him right I have no problem with what he's doing like Canelo didn't start that shit Canelo didn't start oh well you can't weigh over a certain amount um the next day he didn't start it so don't try to put it on Canelo Alvarez as if he just going out there every fight he have he tell the fighters Oh, no, I'm not fighting you unless you weigh a certain pound. That's negative. Stop it, Marquez. That's false, right? That's very false. Now, for Nacho Bernstein to come out and say that Canelo haven't had that fight that captured the heart of the people, that's false. That's very false, Bernstein, right? Because last time I checked, Canelo fought the best in every division, everybody. He fought the best. He fought um, Austin Trout, Erzlandi Laura, who was the best at 154. He fought 
um, Floyd Money Mayweather, who was the best at 47 and 54. He fought Danny Jacobs, one of the best at 150. He fought Triple G, which I'm finna get into, at 160 pounds, right? He was the best at 160. He fought three top dogs at 168, and Billy Joe, Callum Plant, and Caleb, and Callum Smith, and Caleb Plant. They was big dogs at 168, and he fought the most prestige champion at 175, who was still a world champion, and Sergey Kovalev, whether no matter what people want to say or not, and then he was going to be a five-division world champion by going up the cruiserweight. Now, when Nacho say things like Canelo having had that one fight to capture the heart of the people, Triple G twice was the fight. I repeat, Triple G um, twice was the fight. Canelo Alvarez was not the favorite in that fight. He was the underdog. The narrative going into the first fight is Triple G is too strong for Canelo. Canelo haven't ever been hit by somebody that strong. He's not going to be able to withstand Triple G power once he start gassing out. He went out there. He got a draw in the first fight. I thought he won it. Some people thought Triple G won it. I'm okay with that. Right? So I'm okay with a draw. <clears throat> Sorry. Come the second fight. Mexican style Max. Big, big drama show Max. I want my belt Max. Mm, rematch Max. Mm, me want to rematch. Mm, big drama show. Mexican style. No, Canelo. Don't run. Fight me toe to toe. Mexican style Max. Me want my belts now Max. That's Triple G, right? That's Triple G. Max, if he stand in front of me, Max, my power, my power is too much. He can't take my power. Canelo went out there in the second fight, walked his ass down. Walked his ass down, gave his ass Mexican style by arm um, fighting. He wanted to box that fight. You understand? He wanted to box. And that fight captured the hearts of the people because Canelo was supposed to be knocked out against Triple G. Go look at everybody's reactions. Go look at everybody. Re oh, Canelo not going to take the rematch. Oh, Canelo got so lucky in the first fight. Oh, Canelo's afraid of Triple G. All that bullshit. But when Canelo go out there and walk his motherfucking ass, right? Beat his ass every time they went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Even in the first fight, every time they went toe-to-toe, -to -toe, Canelo beat his ass. These are facts. These are feelings. Go look at Canelo Triple G, the first fight, and look at them every time they stood there and went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Canelo got the best of them. And that's what Canelo knew. His power is not all that. I can take that shit. It's strong, but I can take it. And in the second fight, I'm walking straight to his motherfucking ass. And in the second fight, Canelo walked straight to him. Straight to him. Right? So when Bernstein say, oh, he haven't had that fight, that's negative. That's very fucking negative. You understand me? So when I'm looking at the situation, I'm just seeing jealousy and hate from Nacho. I'm seeing jealousy and hate from Marquez. Nacho was Marquez's trainer. Nacho trained Oscar De La Hoya. I want y'all to let that sink in. And then he made another statement. I don't want to read the entire article, but he made another statement of um, Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. is my brother. I would never put Canelo Alvarez over him. Those are feelings. Those are feelings, right? And I'm not mad at them for picking who they say is the greatest Mexican fighter of all time because you can have your pick. You can have your pick. But don't try to discredit Canelo for being in the mix. Don't say he's not in a, the mix of the greatest Mexican, Mexican fighters right now because that's bullshit. That's bullshit. Nacho, out of everybody you train, out of your whole entire list, and you have a fucking list of, of, of magnificent fighters and champions and unified champions and, and, and multi-division champions. You can only point out Canelo, sir, you can only point out um, Oscar De La Hoya and Juan, Mar Juan Manuel Marquez has been a class with Canelo Alvarez. <coughs> That's it. <coughs> you can only point out Oscar De La Hoya and Juan Manuel Marquez to be in a class with Canelo Alvarez. And Canelo passed Juan Manuel Marquez and he's about to surpass Oscar De La Hoya as the greatest Mexican fighter, right? But when Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. came out and passed the torch to Canelo, the man that y'all want to say is your brother, the man that Oscar De La Hoya said is his brother, and he was just trying to be nice to Canelo when he said Canelo's the greatest Mexican fighter of all time, and he passed the torch. I mean, it, it, it's, it's clear as day out of the elephant mouth. Y'all don't want to accept that. Y'all don't want to. Chavez Sr. accepted it. Chavez Sr. said in Canelo Alvarez, he know that he's a bad motherfucker. He know that the skill set is not um, the typical Mexican um, skill set. Canelo got defense. He got counterpunching abilities. He can walk your ass down. He got power. He got a chin. He got a chin, right? So Canelo is a total package, bro. He got it all, man. And he's not afraid to fight nobody. Nobody. 
Because whomever you put in the ring with him, Canelo is going to be the favorite. Let that sink in. Whomever you put in the ring with Canelo Alvarez, Canelo is going to be the favorite. And that says a lot. It says a lot. I just think the jealousy sinks in when people see Canelo making the money he make and the status he's at and that he get to do it his own way and he control his career. He don't have a promoter bossing him around or forcing him to do shit that he don't want to do. Because I'm quite sure there's a lot of fighters out there that didn't, do, that didn't want to do what the promoter wanted them to do, but they had to do it because they was contractually obligated. You understand what I'm saying? Now that Canelo is free and he's doing it the way he want to do it, it make a lot of fighters jealous and mad because they didn't have that power that Canelo possesses. You understand? They didn't have the power that Canelo possesses. And I'm quite sure Marquez would have loved to have the power along with Nacho bringing in the $40 million paydays, the $50 million paydays. And if you get Canelo the right opponent, or it could be a $100 million payday. So if you're looking at Canelo as a nine-figure man, right, and you're looking at him who feel like he did more than Canelo and he ain't got near what Canelo got, then y'all know where the jealousy set in that, man. Y'all know where it's set in that. If I'm not trying to say that Canelo don't got the heart of the Mexican people, I feel like that's false. The Mexican people love Canelo, not just the Mexican people, the American people, the UK people, the fucking ink, whatever people around the world. Canelo is a global fucking icon now. Everybody love Canelo. People not going to admit it, but the dude just on top of his game right now at the end of the day, bro. So when I look at these legends come out hating on Canelo Alvarez, getting pissed off because him and Eddie is doing, you know, astronomical shit. Right? It only looked like jealousy, bro. It only looked like jealousy. And I can't see how another Mexican can hate on a Mexican that's holding it down for the fucking country. Right? Canelo got the fucking Mexico on his back and holding it down, bro. Y'all need to be start giving, you know, great criticism instead of constructive criticism and hate. Right? Or they can fool y'all, but they can't fool. They not fooling us. Canelo is doing what he's doing in the game, bro. And he earned this fucking position. He earned it. So at the end of the day, man, they can say what they want to say. Canelo will go down in history as the greatest Mexican fighter of all time and one of the greatest to ever lace him up. And there's nothing Nacho can do about it. Marquez, Mayweather, none of these hate motherfuckers. Canelo is running the game. He's doing it the way he's want to do it. He move how he move on his chessboard. He his own man. He control his own destiny. They can stay jealous and they not go stop nothing. Like I say, that Canelo train is coming at a thousand miles per hour. Stand in front of it and watch what happens. Keep doing your thing, Canelo. Don't let none of these motherfuckers make you stop. Uh, moving how you want to move. You weren't the king. You weren't the. And to the end, it's your boy Money's the NSBC moving. Anybody safe in these streets? Hit them thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you want to donate OG Money on Cash App. Trade out the 52 at gmail.com on PayPal. If not, just tell a friend, tell a friend. Hit the subscribe button. Like, comment, share the videos. And yeah, I know how your boy get down, man. Big dog status family.